Morning. Welcome to our time of worship together today. It's great to see you. Uh, for those at home, it's great to see you too. Um, I'm not quite sure about some of those pyjama combinations, but I'm sure you'll sort them out in future. Um, welcome to our service together. Our scripture reading to help us prepare our hearts comes from Psalms 85. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Let us pray. Father God, we pray, Lord, for your voice. We pray, Lord, for your presence. We pray, Lord, for you to come and warm our hearts with your presence, to enliven our minds, to reconnect us with you and with each other as we gather today. May your spirit so fill us that we overflow with your grace, with your joy, with your goodness, so that others too may see the difference. Others too may see your kingdom. Lord, we come to worship you. Be with us, meet with us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And our first worship song follows on. If you are able to stand, please do so. We're going to sing together, You Give Life. You are love.
your fresh air of good news, of peace, of grace. May your being so indwell in us that just as we breathe out, we're breathing out your grace to those around us. May your breath of life be in us, sustain us, and sustain our communities. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please do take a seat. So God's Spirit is known by a number of um, elements, pictures. Does anyone remember, this could be the hardest question you have in the whole of this morning's service. Does anyone remember when we talked about Pentecost, how the Spirit looked upon the disciples before Peter got up to speak? It's been a week or two. It's, you know, you've got to get some dust out of the brain cells here. Anyone remember? What was the picture of the Holy Spirit? What did the Spirit of God look like upon the disciples? Ione. Flames of fire! Yes. So I just wanted to do flames of fire. You're awake now, aren't you? <laughs> Praise God, yes. It appeared like flames of fire. Now, have you heard of that before? How's, how's your biblical knowledge? Come on, folks. How has God appeared in fire before in the history of the Israelites? Oh, yes. Moses over here. Moses, any other takers? Moses, and what was the occasion? The burning bush. And Moses is like, hmm, this looks interesting. There's a bush on fire, but it's not actually burning. I'm going to go and see what happens. Remember that? And he goes over, and God starts speaking to him. Can you imagine that, right? Imagine just walking out onto the grassy area just out here, and suddenly one of the bushes comes into flame. What do you do next? <laughs> ah! <laughs> now, that's a good answer. Keep that in the back of your minds. Ah, oh, the bush is on fire. We need a fire extinguisher. Excellent. What else? I'm holding a clue in my hand. No, the other hand. How else is the Holy Spirit pictured? This is not a hard question, all right? right? The first one was the hard question. We're over and done with hard questions. How else is the Holy Spirit pictured? Glass? No. Mmm. Oh, yes. The living water. When you're thirsty and you get a drink of water, how does it feel? It feels good. Yes, it does. Because it refreshes us. And so one of the pictures about the Holy Spirit is of the Holy Spirit refreshing us like water. It's just an excuse, really, for me to stand here and drink water. Mmm. Anyone thirsty right now? Oh, yeah, there's one thirsty over there. This, I'll tell you what. Mm. Oh, this is lovely. Ah. Cruel, aren't I? What else does water do? Quenches the thirst. So when we're talking about the Holy Spirit and water, we're talking about quenching a spiritual thirst. There's something within us that's dry without God's Spirit. And we need to be refreshed and made alive. How would that look like in the countryside? New life. Can we have our picture, please? Here is a picture of the Atacama Desert in Chile, which, if my geography is correct, is in South America. Phew. On the left is the desert picture. And on the right, you can see it's the same place, but it's after rains have come. When would you like to be in the Atacama Desert? 
OK, let's go with after the rain. Some people might go, actually, I, I quite like the, uh, the dryness, the, the, the dust. But look how beautiful it is too, after the rains have come. And so when we talk about the Holy Spirit as being like water, we've got quenches thirst, spiritually quenches thirst, brings life. And what is, uh, I'd hesitate to ask the men and the young people here, but let's give it a go. Ladies, bear with us. What else does water do that perhaps you might come across in the morning if you've got water in a sink? Might come across after a meal if you've got water in a washing up bowl? Or perhaps a shower or a bath? Are these concepts that men and young people are familiar with? I, you might need to speak to some of the ladies here if you're not too sure. But what does the water do then? Yeah, so, so that's fine. So we're expecting some of the ladies perhaps to answer because Dorian said, I don't know. Ah, okay. Thankfully, Mahalia's come in here. So, cleanses. Perfect. Cleanses. And so when we talk about spirit, we're talking about cleansing us as well. Sometimes we use technical language and we get all serious and we go, has God cleansed your sins? Because hmm? sometimes, either intentionally or unintentionally, we do stuff that just ain't right. And God washes that away. We ask for his spirit to wash that away. And one last thing, a river. Think of a river flowing through the land. What might you notice about that river in context with the land? Would we find it, oh the picture's gone, would we find it, sorry I didn't tell you that I was going to use it again, would we find it on that rock at the back right at the top? Would we find the river there? No. Um, okay, yep. Yeah. And what else do we notice about river? Things grow by the side of it. Things grow by the side of it. Yep. What about when you're looking at the landscape? The topology. Mm. I'm just proving I know a couple of ology words. Close to the sea. Close to the sea. Okay. Goes to the sea, yep, goes to the sea, yep. Higher or lower than, the, the, yeah, so it flows down here. And actually, it can carve itself through the land. Have you ever stepped in a stream, anyone? Yeah. Taking your shoes and socks off, dip your feet, going, oh, that's nice and refreshing. Unless you're in Scotland, then you step into the river and you go, oh, that's so cold, and you come back out again and your feet have all gone blue. <laughs> well, that's what's happened to me anyway. In fact, I remember, side story here just for fun, I remember being in Scotland on a really hot summer and it was so hot that there were heath fires and we were called out to go and help put out the heath fires. And I burnt the trousers I was wearing um, as, as part of that. But um, one of the guys that I was with decided that he needed to go and cool off. So he jumped into the lock. That wasn't such a good idea, because it's very, 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 very cold. Three other guys had to go in and pull him out, because he couldn't then, it was all like that. So just be careful of that, the cold. If I'm telling you to dip your feet in the water, I also want to keep you safe. So, have you noticed the rocks in a stream when the water has flowed through? Are they all jaggedy? Or are they? They're round. They're smooth. They have been. They've kind of changed shape. The water transforms them and smooths them. And so, when we're talking about God's spirit in us, God's spirit also tr is transforming us, taking off what we might call our rough edges, and making us that bit more like Jesus, so that we can be full of grace and love, so that we can overcome temper, so that we can overcome anger and we can bring and be people of peace. Anyone know a scripture that might describe, this is 
Actually, no, I'm not going to ask that because I've promised you I won't ask any super hard questions anymore. Let's have a scripture from John. So this comes from John 7. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow within. Come to Jesus. Come and be refreshed. If you're thinking, God seems far away. If you're thinking, oh, I'm really struggling right now. Or if you're just thinking, oh, actually, I'm feeling a bit dry. Come and ask for his river of water to come within. Hallelujah. The church says, Amen. 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 Right. Who's going to pray for God's spirit to come and fill? Because you don't want me to do all the work. Come on, you're fed up with my voice already. Brilliant. Amen. Amen. Thank you ever so much for that lovely prayer. So, next time you drink water, and perhaps next time you wash, think of God's Spirit and use that moment to say, hey, come and fill me. Let's have a welcoming to the Holy Spirit song. It's called Holy Spirit, We Welcome You. And we will take up the offering during this song. I can see Ganetta going, phew, finally Roger has remembered. <laughs> Holy Spirit, we welcome you over to our team here to lead us. Word, okay.
Amen. And as we've given our offering during that song and asked for the Holy Spirit to renew and accomplish something in you in us today, we also ask that God's Spirit will accomplish something new in the financial gifts that have been brought. Those here today, those that have been transferred uh, directly to um, the church bank account. We pray, Lord, for your blessing and anointing upon it. May all of these funds be used to show um, your kingdom in our community, our church community, in our wider community. We pray you will multiply it. In Jesus' name, amen. Please do take a seat. <coughs> We've got a couple of birthdays coming up this week. We've got Noah and Alma. Noah's in the building, so Noah's going to come up to the front, because as you know, he's quite a shy and retiring guy, so um, he, doesn't, he doesn't mind, do you? Well, you know. <laughs> okay. Now, we're going to sing you happy birthday with some slightly different words. Okay, so this is for you and for Alma. Don't worry, you haven't got to... It's not one where you have to put the names in. You may or may not remember. I have done this before, but I appreciate you may not know the words. The words are, happy birthday to you, to Jesus be true. May God's richest blessings be showered on you. Have you got that? Happy birthday to you. To Jesus be true, may God's richest blessings be showered on you. Give it that a go? Yeah. Let's give it that a go for Noah and for Alma. Happy birthday to you, to Jesus be true, may God's richest blessings be showered on you. Amen. It's kind of nice to sing a prayer, isn't it? Don't you think? From time to time, it is good. Um, now, some notices before the young people go out too. I'm going to start with one that's definitely not on the sheet, and it's while I remember it. Laquane! Laquane, you don't know this yet, <laughs> but you are coming with me, Camelia, and Nathaniel, and Marcel a bit later in the month to Marcel's dad's studio where we're going to have a look at that so we can be thinking together about doing some recording, maybe a kind of a blog or a vlog or something like that. So we're going to be teaching you um, in some of the social media skills and we're looking for um, younger generation people to be talking a little bit perhaps about your faith or something that's happened in the youth and children's team or just something that's happened in life. Are you, are you good with that? I'll let you know the specific <laughs> date. I, I was taught by a uh, children's worker who happens to be our daughter-in-law the other day that when you ask someone a question, you don't say, would you... So she did it for her husband, our son Jonathan. She said to him, would you like to do the washing up or the drying up? Did you get what was going on there? Didn't actually have a choice in terms of you've got to do something. You couldn't just say, no, I don't want to do the washing up. So I've kind of approached it in that way. I hope that's not too pushy. Um, but um, we would like to encourage you in that. We've seen the skills both uh, you two and Camelia have, and so we want to be building that up. Uh, and th thank you to Marcel and his dad for creating this opportunity for us to look at how we might do that. Right, so that was the first notice. You can relax, I'm not making you come up to the front. Um, we have got some other notices, haven't we? Yeah, the other stuff is happening. Um, let me give a quick update on uh, Dnipro Mission and a couple of the folks there. Um, are, is anyone here giving any notices? If you want. To. Okay, so interrupt me when I've done this bit, okay. Um, uh, a little update, the chap you see in the picture here is Pastor Alexander Dimenchenko. You may or may not remember, some time ago, just before the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Pastor Alexander was involved in uh, installing a lift at their church building uh, to do for the 
uh, disabled people. Pastor Alexander was leading the ministry to disabled people. Um, they were trying to save uh, money. Well, they didn't have lots of money, so they were kind of doing it themselves. And unfortunately, during the fit and him checking the load taking, they hadn't completely done everything up and uh, his legs were crushed by the plate. Um, he received treatment uh, in Kiev, um, but they said to him, you won't walk again. I present to you a picture, and you can clearly see what's happening there. Uh, Alexander uh, was helped to get out of Kiev after the invasion, because by that time he was in his, I think it was something like eighth floor apartment. He couldn't, you know, he was basically bed bound still at that point. Um, and you may remember at the beginning of the invasion, Kiev was a prime target um, for, the, for the Russians. But the family managed to get him out. He's receiving treatment uh, in Central Europe. And just the other week, I can't remember if it's the week, just gone on the one before, um, he's beginning to walk aided. So let's just pray for him and I'll give a, another update. Father God, we thank you for your renewing. We thank you for your reconnecting of uh, bone and ligaments, etc. Thank you, Lord, for the medical care that Alexander is receiving. Thank you, Lord, for uh, his family and that they've been able to get out to a, a safe place uh, for him to be recovering. We know, Lord, that at one point the medical team were stunned that he was actually even still alive after some various infections and having pneumonia. So, Lord... Thank you for your blessings on them. May you continue to bless them. May he have full recovery and um, may you be able to return uh, to head up the ministry to the disabled in uh, the coming months. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So there you go. A bit of work of God's spirit going on. Um, and uh, just a couple more as an update. Um, That car is currently parked on the manse driveway and uh, there's two slightly zany, slightly mad guys are going to drive it across to the Polish border with Ukraine early tomorrow morning, leaving at about half past four. You didn't quite know that bit. Dorin, stick, give us a wave. So myself and Dorin are going to be taking that car plus supplies. Um, we're staying with... Uh, um, some folks from the Mennonite uh, church in Germany, in Dresden, um, tomorrow night, and then travelling on to um, near the border with Poland for Tuesday night, and then doing a handover on Wednesday. So we would uh, thank you for the donations that you've given uh, towards the, uh, the cost of the trip. Um, and... Uh, perhaps I can have someone else pray for the trip. We're taking, by the way, oh, <laughs> we're, we're taking trauma dressings, burn dressings, various um, uh, clothing items, bacterial, antibacterial wipes, food and so on. So we're, we're loading up with supplies and we'll give the whole package over to uh, Pastor Sasha Boyko. Uh, he's going to be travelling up um, during Tuesday uh, Tuesday evening to uh, to meet with us for the handover. I'm going to come and stand next to you. Would any of the children like to come and pray mm. as well? <clears throat> Anybody here like to pray for us, Randorin? Feel free to come up in the middle of it. If, you, if anybody is inspired and wants to come up and pray. Yeah. I just want to share how um, behind the scenes, the, the planning for this, it was kind of given to Roger as a project. Um, as one of the trustees um, and I even when we had COVID Roger was messaging people phone calls with people Andre from the church was put, put Roger in touch with people in Romania who put him in touch with people in Moldova and at one point that was the plan and then that didn't work and then they tried a different plan um, he's been on the phone to somebody in San 
not San, San Francisco. California. California, California, who is the brother of somebody in Lviv or something. <laughs> um, and oh, honestly, it's like, I'll, I'll walk into a room and what I, oh, I'm just on the phone to Pastor Sasha, who's in Basel Kivka. And, and then it's going, oh, Sarah, I've got a, a call scheduled because of the time difference. I know I'm phoning this person from California who can speak to the person in the river. It's all very <laughs> complicated. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that Roger has worked hard on it, but also that mm -hmm. God has been working on this. You know, God's had a plan all along. And um, it's just really amazing to see it all fall into place. And it's amazing when God's, you know, when brothers and sisters in Christ step up and say, I want to help, I can put you up, I can do this. And it reminds me of when God sent out the 72, sorry, when Jesus sent out the 72 and told them not to take anything with them. Yesterday I was <laughs> fussing slightly. I try not to, normally I don't pack Roger's bag, even when we go on holiday he packs his own bag, but I started fussing slightly. Well, aren't you taking this? No, you're taking this. No, you're taking this. Well, you should really take this. And Roger said, it's fine, it's fine. And I thought, I know that, I haven't actually said, shared that with Roger, that, that thought that Jesus sent out the 72 and was like, don't take anything with me. <laughs> and I think the car is going to be so <clears> full <throat> of supplies and necessary things to give to people in Ukraine that actually they need to not have all, all the things that I would worry about. What if this happens? What if this happens? I should take <laughs> this just in case. No, actually, God's got it all in, under control. Um, but we want to pray for you both uh, on this mission trip as you go out because you don't still fully know quite the full 100% itinerary and of exactly where. Mary, oh, I just want to share, Marius, who is our City Harvest delivery driver, he's from Poland, and so he's been really helpful, helped um, to make a really good suggestion to Roger that they hire a car from the Polish airport to then have two cars at this point, go to Ukraine, come back in the, one, in the car, the, the rental Polish car. rental car and helped Roger to book all of that and everything. So, yeah, it's um, complicated, but God has been in it all. Yeah. Father God, we thank you for this plan that you had in place. Lord, we thank you for the funds that have come, a big chunk of it from Oasis Trust that have got, has gone to DHM. Lord, we thank you for Dorin's willingness to go on this trip, for Mahela's willingness for Dorin to go. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we, we pray that you would equip them both with what they need. Mm -hmm. Equip them with um, being able to drive for long hours. Um, Lord, I thank you for the camaraderie that they will undoubtedly have on this trip. Mm -hmm. Lord, I also pray for your divine appointments for yeah. them along the way. Mm -hmm. And Lord, especially for the handover of the car. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray that you would be at work in that. The things that can't quite be 100% put in place beforehand, yeah. we pray for your spirit to be guiding people to be in the right place at the right time. Yeah. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Lord, we pray that you will have your hand upon them as they go out, that the journey will be smooth and trouble-free, and that they will get there and be able to present this car to them in Ukraine, and that it will be an amazing blessing. We pray that the supplies that they're able to get into the car will be just the ones that are needed. Lord, we pray that you will be able to cram in as much as, in, in fact, more than you'd expect to get in a car of that size. I pray that everything will go well. And we give thanks that Roger and Dorian are so willing to go and to, to take this long journey to deliver this car that will be such a blessing and enable the pastor there to be able to keep going and collecting food supplies and other things that are so necessary for the community he serves there. Lord, we do continue to lift up the whole of Ukraine and pray that, Lord, there will be a peace and a freedom that they don't enjoy at the moment. Amen. 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 Lord, I thank you for Roger and um, Dorin, Dorin, who will be taking this journey to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Lord God, I'm asking you to be their guide, to go before them, to keep them safe on their journey, to protect them from all evil, all all harm that wants to attack them. 
I thank you for the hard work that they put in. I thank you for their faithfulness in wanting to do this job. I ask that you will cover them under the shadow of your almighty wing. Mm -hmm. And I pray that everything will go well on their journey. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, I give them to you now and pray that your Holy Spirit will cover them from head to foot because you are a God of loving kindness. Mm -hmm. So hear our prayers this, e this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So some other dates for you. I, I would I'll um, share, or maybe Doreen and I share a bit about the trip when we're when we're back, and we'll share with that with you uh, next Sunday because we we fly back um, Thursday night. Um, some other dates. So Sunday the nineteenth, which is next Sunday, we've got a fellowship meal after the service. Um, We've, I, I've been saying that Emma and Mahela are our, our chefs, but actually that's expanded, and I think there's quite a group uh, of folks. I'm not quite sure exactly who's included, but it sounds like, yeah, Ka Carmen, Callen, are you? Paola, and, and Paola. Okay, so we've got we, we've got a, a group um, providing a lovely meal. So please do. Uh, stay for after service for the meal next week. Invite friends and family. Um, and uh, there is no cost. Uh, the church uh, cover the cost for it. So uh, the more, the merrier. Uh, also, the following Friday, 24th, there's a midsummer night praise event over at West Hendon Baptist Church from 7.30 to 9.30. Details are on the notice sheet. And the day after, Saturday the 25th, the walking group have a Hampstead Heath picnic. Um, so the meeting up is outside of Aldi's at 10.30 on Saturday. Again, see the details in the notice. Uh, see Chris if you're planning to, to join in with that. Excellent, thank you. Um, so let me pray for the young people and leaders before uh, you go out. Um, Father God, we thank you for our young people. We thank you for their growing skills and talents. We thank you for the fellowship they have amongst each other um, and with the leaders. May you bless them in their session this morning. May you refresh and renew them. Give them joy. Give them peace. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to have just a few more prayers before we have the uh, sermon. Uh, it's only be a short uh, prayer time because I appreciate that we've just had uh, uh, the prayer time before the children went out. Um, just so we can pray for some other folks. So if there's somebody on, on your mind, then please do share. I'm going to pray for... Um, well, we've got several people on the list. We've got John and Jane. If you didn't know, uh, John had a little trip to hospital. Um, he was in quite severe pain and uh, he was taken to Ealing Hospital from the doctors. Um, um, but they did come home, it's not quite, they came home early hours of the following morning, which I think was Wednesday morning. Um, 
and uh, he's got some painkillers and it was uh, eased, but continued to pray for the recovery. Chris and I uh, saw them on Wednesday and John came to the door with Jean, so um, good news there. I'd also like to pray for uh, Joshua. Um, he and his wife founded Dnipro Hope Mission, so it's that Joshua as opposed to this Joshua. Um, he has just returned from Frankfurt. He and the family went across. He was due to be given some lectures um, over there, but he had a burst appendix. Uh, unfortunately, there were some delays in the diagnosis, um, and he got sepsis, and um, he's, uh, he w- he's been unable to walk, really weak, um, a, but an elderly lady from the church, from the Baptist church in um, Frankfurt, um, had like an annex cottage uh, on a house, so they've been staying there for several days to help him in his recovery. Um, and so they've just made the trip back. He did struggle with it because he really needs to be quite close to a bathroom. Um, and he's um, been in, I think, through emergency care here so they can check um, if all of the um, infection has gone uh, and so on. So uh, we'll pray for him. Uh, we'll also pray for Sonia. Uh, if you uh, didn't know, Sonia is actually a teaching assistant um, at one of the local schools. And she, uh, last week she contracted COVID for the third time. Shows you about different strains, doesn't it? Um, so let's pray for her full recovery. And indeed for Aditya, who's... Um, had a uh, fever um, over the last few days, which I hear from um, Camellia is kind of extreme hay fever type um, reaction. If there's any others that you know of, uh, let's just use this couple of minutes to pray for those, for those folks. Father God, we thank you for all of these folks that I've just mentioned. We pray, Lord, for your spirit to be with them. We pray, Lord, for their full recovery. We pray, Lord, that um, you will renew them as you heal them and that they will recover all the more stronger than before they were unwell. Lord, in your mercy, heal them and hear our prayer. Amen. Just an opportunity if there's others you know of before we finish this part of the prayer time. Okay, amen. So we continue our exploration of Ezekiel today. And today we're in the valley of the dry bones. I was kind of tempted... It might be a song that, has anyone heard of the song, Dem Bones, Dem Bones, Dem Dry Bones, Dem Bones? Yeah, I was kind of tempted to, to play that, but I'll, I'll spare you the, the pain of that. Um, but it's always been a story that I've been quite amazed at and uh, enjoy reading about the Lord's reconnecting of these bones. So let me just read this event to you, and then I shall make some comments about it. It comes from Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord was on me, says Ezekiel. And he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of dry bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I'm guessing that's one of the not-so-difficult questions that Ezekiel faced. Ezekiel was like, hmm, I don't know about this. What's his answer? Ah, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put in you breath and you will come to life and you will know 
that I am Lord. So, I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, and there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breathe from the four winds and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. Alleluia. Amen. Wow. What a story. As I said, I've always been partly amazed and partly puzzled by this story. The Lord reconnected these bones. But actually, it's much more than that. It's more than just a stack of old bones being reconnected. This unique story tells of a man being empowered by God to show his power, purpose and presence to the people of Israel. Of God giving this man instructions on what to say. And as the man speaks out, he is, as he is led by God's Spirit, the voiced command of the Lord made through this man begins to be put into a physical reality. And then, it's still not enough for these bones to be reconnected, for the tendons, the muscles, the arteries, the veins, the internal organs, the skin to make these into people. But to be fully human... They need life. And when the breath of God enters them, then they become this newly formed vast army. Amazing, isn't it? Reminds me of, ooh, ooh, what is that? What is that you've all got? It's all over you. What is it? Oh, it's skin. It's kind of handy, really. Keeps everything in, doesn't it? Just thought I'd add that into the mix. So we're exploring some stories from this. I'm just checking if you're awake, really. <laughs> what do we learn about God? What do we learn about ourselves? From the very beginning, we hear about God speaking. Any ideas on what that scripture is? Genesis? Yep. Any idea on a few words that point that out to us? Another excuse to... I'm not sure. It's repeated quite a number of times. And God said. Let us make mankind in our image, for example. You see, when God speaks, he creates. This is what we learn about God. He speaks and in his voice is creation, is life is new things. For us today, and indeed for Ezekiel back then, it may be a new image or a vision in the mind. It may be a new command or bring into remembrance an existing command as the Spirit prompts us and says, hey, remember, I said this. Or it may be to give a new revelation about him and his kingdom. 
All the people that God chose as prophets, every one of them, talk about the Lord speaking to them. His voice is a remarkable thing. So that's the first thing we learn about God. He speaks and he creates. Let us all listen for God's word. Let us all take a moment in our days to sit quietly and say, God, will you speak to me? Let us reflect at the end of the day and go, ah, how has God spoken me, to me during the day, even if I didn't quite recognise it? So that's the first thing. The second thing, spirit. We also see from the beginning there's a partnership at work. God's spirit is hovering over the deep. God formed a man from the dust of the ground and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life says Genesis 2.7. So we hear about how God then will create people with a singleness of heart and action. When God spoke to Jeremiah, the prophet, he spoke to them and said, hey, I, re- I desire all of you to be connected with me. And we hear that from another guy, a prophet, Joel, who Peter quotes, anyone remember, broadly-ish, some of what was said. When Peter spoke up on the day of Pentecost, he said, hey, do you remember this scripture? This is what the prophet Joel said. Any remembrance? Yes, my spirit will be poured out. In the last days, God will pour out his spirit on all people. So he's talking about the promised coming of God's spirit. So God speaks and God comes via his spirit. He does not abandon his work of creation, but he sustains it. He renews it. He revitalizes it. He revitalizes us as part of his creation. So if that's about God... That moves us nicely into a little bit about us. Who are we in this picture? Are we the dry bones? Are we the ones saying, ah, where is God? Where is God in our society? Where is God in our nation? Where is God in our, on the earth? Are we dry bones? Are we struggling with a dry faith? Jesus spoke of building his church. So in this picture of the reconnection and creating a vast army, Jesus spoke of building the church and saying, hey, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not withstand this vast army. In other words, the church he builds are not some passive being. They're not the bones reconnected, the, um, the tendons, the muscles, the organs, the flesh put on, but with no life. God breathes and says, you will be proactive in my kingdom. You are raised up. And he promises his spirit. Because Jesus, son of God, God, they are of one Spirit. He says, when the advocate, another name for the Holy Spirit or God's Spirit or helper, whom, when he comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me, and you must testify also, for you have been with me from the beginning. Wow. When we are connected with God's spirit, when we listen out for God's voice, when we say, Lord, send me your spirit, fill me with your spirit, may I be so refreshed, may I, my thirst be quenched, may I be like new life, or actually new life, and may you be transforming me, and that applies to the community. When we say that, 
we come into his purpose for this vast army. He has not created them simply to be stood at the side watching what is going on in the world. He has created his church to be reconnected with him and with each other for the purposes of bringing his refreshing, his new life upon the earth. I wonder how you feel when you hear or how you think these words. You, that's us lot, must also testify. When he says this, Jesus was not only meaning that we give voice to his kingdom, but he creates this singleness of heart and action, just as he did with Jeremiah, just as he did through Joel, and says, you have a living, refreshing purpose. You are valuable in the kingdom. If you are not connected in with this vast army, the church, and you are not connected in with me and being encouraged in each other and practicing that, then you are more likely to have dry faith. You are more likely to start falling apart back into the dry bones. But there is some good news in having some, a period of dry faith. Because actually, when we're talking about that, we're talking about being spiritually dry. And there's a prompt in it. God is saying to us, hunger and seek after me more, because that is the answer. It may be an indication that something is wrong, that we are choosing to ignore God, to be walking away from him. And so if we're in this dry valley, if we are the bones in our faith, then create space to intentionally seek God. Pray for his reviving and reconnecting spirit. So four reasons we might face spiritual dryness. One, we're not tapping into the gifts that God has given for his people to grow spiritually. Two, there may be sin in our lives, as in we're doing something against the nature of God. Three, we may be reaching actually our physical and spiritual limit. And it might be the Lord saying, hey, take some rest. Have a moment. And actually the place of the wilderness is not simply a dry place, but it's a place to reconnect with God with no other distractions. And four, it may be that God's bringing us through a season of growth. So we're going from like the picture of the Atacama Desert in the dry to the Atacama Desert um, when it's refreshed. So that's what we learn. Paul uses a similar image. He talks about the body to describe the church, all the parts of the body and how it is important that we have all of these parts. So what does it mean? Let's summarise. God. We learn that God speaks and creates. We learn that he sends his spirit to do that in us. And we learn that we must connect or reconnect with God's spirit. We, mu we must ask for his refreshing. And if we are in a dry time, then there's four things for us to look at. Are we actually tapping into the gifts that God has given? Or are we choosing not to connect? Are we choosing to stand at the side and let the vast army get on with it? while we look on. Because that's not a godly place. There may be sin in our lives, which that picture also shows, because it's of choosing not to be in um, God's um, commands in his spirit. Or we may be reaching a physical or spiritual limit, and actually it's a time to say, hey, just take a moment. Or God is actually bringing us through a season of growth. So we can say, hey, I'm dry now, but I know that God will renew me. He's asked for me just to take a pause and then restart. What we must be careful of 
is that we don't choose to disconnect ourselves, to undo the work of God's Spirit in building the vast army, the church, the reconnecting of the bones. Because he is active through his word and spirit, and he calls us to be active with him too. So, I can guarantee that everyone here, including me, has thought sometimes, oh, it's pastoral community group, or previously house group. I don't really feel like it. I, I don't feel like going. And I remember uh, that for myself when I was going along to someone else leading. And then when I went, I was refreshed and renewed. And I was like, hey, this is good. Why didn't I look forward to this? But we're like that sometimes. And we have to overcome it. We have to say, no, I am part of this vast army and I choose to be in it. I choose to be one of the limbs of the body, if you like. And we have to say, I'm going to use every opportunity I can to meet with the body of Christ. Because when we meet with the body of Christ, we encourage each other. We learn wisdom from each other. We laugh and joke together. We pray together. Those who pray together, stay together. Let us not make excuses for not meeting together. We need to do that for our own spirituality and for the spirituality of the others with whom we meet. Because if we gather and you are missing, it's like the church gathering and we've lost an arm. And if several people aren't there, we've lost another arm. And if a couple of others aren't there, we've lost our legs. And we ain't much use as a vast army like that, are we? We need each other. We need the skills, the refreshing, the renewing, the wisdom that God gives. I appreciate that some of you go, ah, oh, but I've been unwell, I can't do this. You know, I'm not talking about genuine reasons on times when we can't gather. I'm talking about those times when actually, in the deep of our hearts, we know we're just making an excuse. We can't really be bothered. Or we think, oh, I'd rather do that. I think it would be more interesting. Let us use the opportunities to gather. We have pastoral community groups. We have Sunday services. We have the community kitchen work on a Wednesday. As uh, time goes on, we will have other events and ways to connect. And it's great. It's easier that we can do that with technology. So many more people can connect in with technology too. So if you can't physically go to a, one of the meetings to join in with the body, do it electronically and join in. Because everybody is called to be part of the vast army. Let us not disconnect ourselves from God's renewing of the valley of dry bones. Amen. Amen. I see time is marching on, probably because of the earlier prayers and the um, DHM notices. We do have communion, um, so I'm going to dive straight into that with us straight away. When we come to communion, we are remembering that last supper of Jesus with his disciples, that intimate setting where, where God says, hey, I will come and eat with you. I will come and drink with you. And it's about being reconnected with God. So when we gather at this table, we celebrate life. And we celebrate the life of God, made flesh and blood in Jesus and embodied in us, the church. We come to remember that the body was broken. The hands that touched the untouchable. The hands that healed the hurting and did no violence. We remember the feet that got dusty along the city streets and wet at the lake shores. We remember the arms that embraced the stranger and embraced the outcast. The legs that entered homes and synagogues and danced at celebrations. The eyes that blazed against injustice 
and knew how to cry and saw the potential in everyone. We remember the belly that shared the table with unexpected people, was filled with food and shook with laughter. The lips that wove stories and painted pictures that spoke life and creation into the world. And we remember the community that Jesus has created to help this be a better world. This we remember when we come into communion. Let's have a song to refresh us uh, before we share in the bread and wine and to remember some of this theme. It's called Broken Vessels. If you're able to stand, please do so. Please do take a seat. It is a tireless reminder and a timeless reminder of the flesh and blood life of Jesus. He was broken, rejected, yet he was unstoppable and you created his church who can also be broken and rejected but brought together to be 
made whole again, to be the unstoppable force of God in this world. For in Christ we see a life that could not be ended by death, a purpose that could not be silenced by the forces of violence, and a desire deep within for the transformation of the world. So as we take and eat, let us remember Jesus' body broken for us. Let us remember that we too were broken and are made whole. Do this with a soberness of heart. Use this time to reconnect with God. To say, refresh me, Lord. To say, wash my sins away, Lord. To say, breathe life into me, Lord. And to say, I will overflow with your spirit. Take and eat to remember. Let us pass out the elements. I'm going to break. You have a choice. There's a gluten-free wafer, or you can use... Um, you will need to take one of these anyway for the, for the wine part. As you receive the bread, please take and eat. So we have taken the bread together to remember the body broken and then made whole. We also drink together to remember the body that bled and died for us and to remember that Jesus' blood was a sign of the new covenant sealed in Jesus' blood himself to start this new promise to bring life, blood life into our veins spiritually. So let us drink together to have his life flowing through our veins. Amen.
play the song after the service. So let's share a blessing together before we take refreshments. Uh, after the blessing, the uh, worship team will be playing the song that we don't have time necessarily to sing um, within the form of service called I Am a New Creation. Feel free after we've done the blessing, if you think, actually, I want to join in with this, I want to celebrate that, feel free to do that before going to get refreshments if you would like. So let's say a blessing together. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice, strive for full restoration, encourage one another, be of one mind and live in peace. And the God of love and peace be with us all. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Yes, had to have a bit of fun. <laughs>